when I'm doing my emitter swaps, I pretty much exclusively use one of these magnifying loops to do all my swaps through just because my eyes are, you know, getting a little older, gets a little hard to see the components. But sometimes, and on a swap like this, that loop is, is fine. That That's good to do on a swap like this tool double A. But sometimes, you know, you just want to see things that are just beyond your vision. And for that reason, I bought a really high quality microscope and this has fe been featured in a couple of my videos. And you can see down here on my mat, there's an emitter. And if you take a look, there's the same emitter on that microscope. Now, I love this thing, but there's two things about it. One, it was expensive. I mean, once you bought the microscope and the stand and the monitor and the mount and everything, this thing was like seven, eight hundred dollars. But two, it's kind of like it takes up a lot of real estate. This whole base is the base of the thing. And it's kind of a big to do to turn it on and get it going. So sometimes I don't reach for it. Well, today we have the Tomlov Digital Microscope DM9 Pro a very cost-effective digital microscope for your modding needs. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. So here is the Tomlov set up. It all came in this box from Amazon, and this thing is around $100, and it's a complete kit. It's got everything you need. And one thing that, honestly, you really need if you're using a digital microscope is a sturdy stand and some light. Microscopes need light, especially when you get close. But this product also includes a monitor and recording capabilities. It's pretty dang cool. So let's take a look at it and see if this would suit your needs. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to be better than the $800 setup I have over here. I mean, this is going to best it. But the question is, is this going to meet the needs of some of you out there that don't want to spend a lot but want the ability to record small things, or even just see up close. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy straight on my mat here, and let's do a side-by-side -side with this microscope and the one that I've had previously. All right, so I don't do unboxings. I think they're a waste of time, and I'm not really gonna read all the specs and everything, because it just doesn't matter. But let me go over some of the features of this microscope very quickly. So it does have a built-in metal base. This is metal. It's got four rubber feet to isolate it from vibrations on the table, okay? And then it's got kind of a combination microscope and monitor in one, like that. And then it's got two different LED lights right here, which are independently controlled right there in the back. And there, there's a battery in here that runs this. Oh, that's the other thing. This whole thing is run via battery. Now you can plug it in so that you never have to worry about charge and it will run plugged in all the time. But the fact that it runs off a battery means that you can go use it in the field. So that's a whole new thing I could never do with this guy over here. This guy needs AC power. But when this thing is all hooked up and there's little set screws everywhere to make sure. So if I hold this, you can see it's nice and it's it's rigid. It doesn't want to like bounce around. And it's it's kind of typical of, you know, many of the digital microscopes I've seen on the market. But um, there's some things I definitely really like about it, even over my other microscope. So let me tell you a gripe I have about this microscope right here. That one thing that I didn't like about this microscope is that zooming in and focusing seem antithetical. What I mean is, if I want to zoom in on this emitter down here, so let's take a look at my screen up here and watch what I do. So if I wanna do this where I zoom in and then I focus, so there you see, I can just, I zoomed in and I focused on that emitter and it's got a great picture, right? Well, it should for $800, right? So let me show you the action of zooming in and focusing, okay? The way it's done is like this. Okay, so back here, see, you can see I'm zoomed out. The way you zoom in is on the barrel of the microscope. This zooms it in. Then focusing is done by moving the microscope up and down. So when I do this, that's focus. Now, that may not seem like a big deal to you guys, but it's just a little antithetical. It's a little opposite of what I would expect. 
And the fact of the matter is that the Tomlov here, let me go and turn it on, the power button's right here. When you use this guy, it kind of works the way you'd expect. So let me get an emitter down here. We can even do a side-by-side, kind of see the quality of $800 versus about 100 okay? So put an emitter down there. You can see the emitter is on the screen. I'm just going to move it down a little bit so it's a little more centered, something like that. Put it in a little center. Okay, now here's the deal. I want to focus. Well, focusing is right here, okay, right there. And it totally makes sense. So I get a focus on the screen. Now, it's a little blown out, actually. There's a little too much light. So, um, you know, I could kill some lights in the room. And by the way, I'm on ambient lights right now. These aren't even on, okay? Well, there's actually light coming out of the microscope itself, but um, I don't think that's what's blowing it out right now. Now, so focus is right here. And then moving it up and down, zooms it in and out, which really kind of makes more sense to me. So let me go ahead and move this down. And you can see it's getting bigger on screen. Okay. Once I get to where I want it, go ahead and focus it. All right. There you go. Now, here's something I noticed. It's a little blown out, right? Well, that's because the lights that are on the microscope here are hitting a glass and white dye surface and it's actually just a little much for it so there's an attachment i want to let you know about this thing i didn't know what this was at first they say it's a diffusing or light blocking attachment well here's what it is let me explain so you got this situation where there's lights right here let me pull this off this just comes right off if you kind of wiggle it so you got emitters right here well what happens is you take this thing and it blocks the light, so you kind of line it up like this, okay? And then you twist it a little bit, and it locks in. But look, not only does it block the emitters, but it redirects them into this diffuse ring and gives a nice ring light. Now, I have to do that when it's mounted, so let me go ahead and do it when it's mounted. I had to put it through the mount. There we go. Let me go ahead and tighten this back up. Okay, tighten it back up. Cool. But what you're going to notice, now let me get the emitter back in the center of the field of view. Now watch this. That attachment difference makes a huge difference. Watch this. Look at that. I'm picking out little details like the serial number on this die right here. Here, let me get in really close. Let's, let's see how close we can get in. Let's get in as close as we can. I'll put that back in the center, tighten this down a little bit, and watch this. Wow, look at that. Do you see the see the cuts right here where I de-domed the emitter? Let me move this with my tweezers. Look at that. I can read that clearly. Let's see right here. Right. Let's get that right there. I got P25. 1E. Oh, I'm sorry, P2, yeah, P251E. It's it's right there. It's clear as day. Now, here's something, and I hope I hope it's focused on my camera right now, because I'm actually using my iPhone for all this. But it's got great quality right here on the screen. And if that's not enough for you, it comes with a mini HDMI to HDMI cable. And let me plug that into the side here. It comes right onto the side here, and you plug it in. Let's get it in there. This screen is going to go off, and then now I'm setting it to the screen above. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. There it is. That is the feed off the microscope. I actually think that the quality on the little mini display is basically as good as I'm seeing on my big display here, but it's worth noting that you got HDMI out, so that means it's great for presentations, it's great for displaying like if you're in a classroom, it's great for people with just poor vision where a seven inch LCD screen wouldn't be big enough. I mean, it effectively makes the magnification larger, doesn't it? Look how large that die is. So that's a really amazing thing. Now, I haven't gone into the UI, I was just showing you the microscope. I think the microscope's excellent. And notice that it's right here, it's running off of battery. So this is a battery powered microscope. It's amazing. And notice that this hasn't gone down at all. This has been at the same battery level the whole time. 
Okay, I'm gonna pull the HDMI out. Now, one thing I noticed is when you pull the HDMI out, the screen doesn't come back on. You have to hit the power button to get the screen to fire back up. Now, once we're into the self-contained system here, notice that there's some buttons down here. One says M for mode, and there's one right here that looks like a little like uh, camera playback. If I hit M right here, that's the middle one, this will change up here and it'll look like a camera. Just hit it one more time and it looks like a playback icon. Well, in the camera mode, if you hit OK over here, it will start recording and it's got a time code right there. And anything I'm doing down here, anything I'm doing is now being recorded. So let me hit OK again to stop it. Now if I hit M for mode and go past the little camera here to the playback mode, now, it doesn't have the same playback icon because it's telling me that this media is a film strip, right? It's a recording. It's a movie. But it also tells me if I hit press OK now, I'll play it. And you'll see that while I play it, you'll see my tweezers go across like I recorded just a moment ago. There they are. Okay? Now, that's awesome. This is really good for just taking recordings of things. I can imagine you could take these files off here and incorporate them in your YouTube videos or upload them online. Now, let me hit M again go back to camera mode and just show that really quickly. So for example, if I was to push that out of the way, let's bring this up a little bit. I'm on the tool AA emitter there. It's a 209C. Okay, there we go. Let me get this a little better centered. There we go. Now, once I got it centered, if I wanted to take a picture of that, let's say I was trying to ID this, you know, emitter and I didn't know what it was, I want to send it to a friend. In the picture mode, you just hit OK. It just says hold on, meaning it was storing the picture. And now when I hit M to go to review, you can see it says picked 0001.jpg. It's a JPEG file. It's two megapixel. And, you know, you could just send this off. Now, while I have multiple pieces of media on the uh, little micro SD card, you can press these arrow buttons to go through the media. So there's the recording I had. One more will take us back to the picture I had. Now, if you want to format the SD card, you press and hold the little M down here and you get a menu. And in the menu, you can protect things from being formatted and you can come down and select delete and say delete all. Now, once I confirm, all the media is deleted. All right, let's go back to the microscope. So yeah, the microscope operates whether you're on the camera or the uh, movie camera. It doesn't matter. That's microscope mode, right? So I just want to point out that uh, this is a really slick little guy here, man. You know, and I'm not even using these extra lights. See these extra lights on the side here? You can use them, but I'm not even doing it. I mean, that means you could use it in the heart of darkness. You can use it in a power outage. I don't know why you would, but there you go. Definitely great for electronics work looking at bugs, looking at little insects with your kids. I mean, the, the unseen world of the uh, micro is now at your beckon. So if you wanted a digital microscope and you didn't want to go hardcore for around $100, I think this Tom Love is a really good setup. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.